Vertical Aerospace have just enjoyed a very successful test phase of their VX4. And to tell us more, I'm delighted to have David King here from Vertical. It's great to have you along. Now, Thank you, first much. of all, congratulations. It's a big moment for you and the company. It is a huge moment. A first flight of a new novel aircraft is a special moment. I was telling the team yesterday that you, know, you think back through your life and you have those moments that you'll never forget. You say, okay, the moment I got married, you know, the birth of my children, and uh, please don't tell my wife or kids, but I think they just got demoted a little bit after this first flight. So it was amazing to see the culmination of a journey of designing a new aircraft. And when you lift off the ground for the first time with a test pilot on board, there's that discovery. You're not really sure if your models are, are doing well, but we were, uh, we were pleased to report that our mathematical models uh, were pretty much spot on. For those who don't know about the VX4 and who Vertical Aerospace are, what can you tell us? So Vertical Aerospace is a Bristol-based aerospace company that is developing the VX4. So it's a four-passenger, all-electric, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft with a pilot of one. So we are now uh, in the process of, of developing the aircraft. Uh, we've applied for type certification with the United Kingdom uh, Civil Aviation Authority, the CAA, and we have concurrent validations with authorities in other regions of the world. Sounds like it's a very, very exciting time within vertical aerospace and also the eVTOL industry as well. It seems to be when you look around, these concepts are now coming to, to fruition. They're not just these pie in the sky ideas. So yeah, we are in an inflection point. So I've been in the helicopter industry for 35 years and the preeminent uh, engineering organization in the helicopter industry is the formerly known as the American Helicopter Society. So the eVTOL revolution is so prominent now that they changed their name to the Vertical Flight Society to really bring in uh, this, this revolutionary point uh, to, to allow uh, the community to come together to enable uh, advanced air mobility. When we look at eVTOL, we're talking about this, uh, this future sci-fi concept that's now. And so we also look at things like AI and we look at virtual reality and things. How are you using these more uh, future focused technologies like AI when it comes to the design of what you're creating? That's an interesting question because if you look at a new aircraft, so if there's a new aircraft that goes through a certification process, you compare that versus its predecessor and you'll see that it was an incremental evolution from a previously certified in-service aircraft. And you know what I've heard some of the big companies say? Is they'll say no more than one new innovation per aircraft. And some of that is because you know, the big aerospace companies have established very mature sets of, of processes. And so they use the same processes and tools for decades. So that gives them that maturity, it gives them that confidence. But what it enables us to do as a new company is bring these new technologies to bear, bring 21st century tools, bring artificial intelligence, bring computing capacity, bring secure cloud-based computing to be able to process really large, large bits of data and process that to be able to uh, integrate uh, thousands of parts together in a, in a well-designed solution. When we look at this sort of technology as well, particularly around these sorts of shows, we look at future workforce. Future workforce has been a topic for a number of years, but I mean, ever since COVID really, and a lot of people left the workforce. And, and how do you start to attract these young minds? It seems like it's quite easy to attract people into eVTOL because it's so cool, but how do you get the right people interested to fill the void, this, this, you know, this, this, this works, uh, workforce void that's now here? I'll tell you, I'm a little biased because you know, I go to work every day and there is never a boring moment. Every day I learn something new and I've been doing this for decades. So it is, I, I find it easy to attract talent. And, and what you have is you'll have people that are coming into university and, and we have here in the United Kingdom, we have really a, a skilled workforce that, that are coming out of some prominent universities. There's also a really good ecosystem for electric batteries, electrochemistry. We, we've hired some really talented PhDs with degrees in electrochemistry. We also have it here in the United Kingdom, a very proud aerospace heritage. You know, we have an assembly center just on the north side of Bristol in the Filton area that you look out the window and you see where the Concorde was born. And, that, and you know, that's inspirational, the heritage here. So we have that talent coming out. And what you see that people want to do is they want to do something that's challenging. They want to do something that's exciting. Often people want to do something as a team where you can accomplish something as a team, but they also want to do something meaningful. And that's what we like to tell them. I said, it's going to be very hard to find a job more meaningful than bringing advanced air mobility to the public. Absolutely right. Now, I mentioned at the very, the very beginning that you had this successful test phase, which is fantastic. What's the, the, the time scale now, the, the route map? Okay, so now this is our prototype aircraft number two. So number one, we flew last summer, and number one was uncrewed. 
So it was flying remotely by a pilot. What that allows us to do is allows us to build the aircraft faster and we don't have to go through a full airworthiness certification. Just fly it over unpopulated areas and keep people away from it. And then you can fly risky tests at a full scale and learn all the engineering data that you need without risking a pilot. So we've gone past that last summer. Now this aircraft number two is our, is our piloted aircraft. But to get a piloted aircraft in the air, uh, we had to show that the design and the product met a very stringent set of airworthiness requirements. So we, we received our permit to fly from the United Kingdom CAA, which was their stamp that this aircraft can fly these experimental tests with the pilot on board and has met a very, very rigorous safety standard. So what that allows us to do is essentially do a practice run for the full certification. So now we have a second, a third aircraft, which we call our prototype aircraft number three, which is exactly like number two, and they're going to do a full envelope expansion flight test program. So develop all the engineering data that we need to then move forward into aircraft four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, which are going to conduct certification tests, which are a rigorous amount of tests to show that it, it meets this set of safety standards. Sounds like it's a very exciting time, and hopefully, David, we can catch up with you before two years are up, but certainly here next time in two years' time, and we're seeing these things flying, maybe at the air show, whoever knows, but no, it's a very They'll exciting They'll be quieter time. than the jets that are flying overboard right now. Don't you know what, won't even hear don't it. Don't know what you're talking about, David. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. It's been a real pleasure. Brandon, Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Thanks so much.